What is going on everyone? Welcome to the second episode of my mini-series on understanding John Mayer's signal chain. This is a crash course for anyone who's either wanting to build a John Mayer inspired pedal board or just to learn more about his signal chain in general and get some more knowledge. One thing before we get into it is if you haven't seen the first episode of the series I did on the basics of John Mary's signal chain, go give that a watch before you watch this video because I'm not going to cover anything I said in that episode on today's episode or any future episodes of this crash course. Now let's get right on into the video. All right, so for today's episode, for part two, we're gonna be talking about five pedals, adding them into the signal chain and where John has placed them historically and where I recommend if you're building your own personal board. The first pedal today is going to be the wah pedal. On my first episode of this course, I had someone comment down like the meme wah pedal. In my joke to you, I had a pretty good chuckle. And yes, for basics, it's not really that important, but for today's episode for the intermediate level, we're going to talk about the wah pedal. Now John always places his wah pedal before the drive section. Specifics on where he actually places it kind of depend on the era. For the 2019 World Tour, he placed it after the clean boost, so the Keeley Katana and the tuner. Now he's placed it kind of in between before and experimented like first in the chain. It's really gonna depend if you're building a pedal board where you like it. I personally think that the wah sounds he got during the 2019 World Tour were some of the best he's ever had. Listening to him use it on like the Belief solo or intro was just crazy. And some other times as well, like Still Feel Like Your Man, the wah sound was incredible. So if you guys wanna check out some of the live performances he did using the wah, I'll try and find some, dig some up for you guys and link them in the description below. So I recommend placing the wah pedal after the tuner and clean boost, but before your rest of the drive section. Now the second pedal we're talking about today is one that I get asked quite a lot on and it's widely discussed in the John Mayer Gear Lounge and that is the Qtron. Now one of the reasons why I think I get asked a lot of questions on the Qtron and a lot of people have troubles with this pedal when they get it is because of where they place it in the signal chain. Now, historically, John usually places the Qtron either after the drives or in between drives. And when I say in between drives, he always makes sure he has at least an overdrive pedal before it and then after it. So as you can see from the picture on your screen of John Mayer's 2019 World Tour pedal board, the Qtron is actually in between the Solo Dallas and the TS-10. You can see that the output jack from the Solo Dallas, that patch cable goes up to the Qtron and then actually comes back down into the TS-10. And that's how John ran it that tour, and that's how I personally like to do it and recommend it. Yes, John has placed it fully after the drive section before, but this is where I recommend because it really does give you the flexibility of having an overdrive before the Qtron and after. But if you're struggling with your Qtron sounds, I highly recommend placing it in between like a Klon and the TS-10 or a Tube Screamer style pedal on your pedal board and experiment with the drive before and after and I think you're gonna be very happy with the result. The third pedal on our list is a pedal that John doesn't really use very often, but it's been consistently placed on his boards for any major performance or tour, and that is the Boss OC3. Now, because it's a pedal that John doesn't use every night or for any real specific song, it's kind of at the spur of the moment when he feels like he wants to use it, it's never really had a consistent place in the signal chain. For example, during the 2019 World Tour, the first leg he had it before the drives, and then for the second and third leg, he had it after the drive section. He also has placed it in the loop of the Qtron Plus as well, just to get some octave sounds with the filter effect for some Dead & Company shows. So right there, there's three different instances of him using the OC3 in a different place within a very short time period. My personal recommendation, try using the OC3 after the drive sections. John clearly made the choice to move the OC3 during the 2019 World Tour from before the drives to after the drive section and he stuck with that for majority of that tour. That's personally where I recommend placing it after all the drives, but really anywhere will be fine as long as you're happy with that sound. John's done it all before. All right, number four on our list is another widely talked about pedal in terms of signal chain placement and this one is a bit of an it depends pedal. It's gonna be the Strymon Flint. Now when I say it depends, it depends on how John is using it for the tour or for the performance. Now, more often than not, John solely uses the trem side of the Strymon Flint. He uses that for gravity and some other effects, but mainly gravity is what the Strymon Flint is used for. And as John predominantly uses the trem side, he places that before all the delays and other modulation. For an example, during the 2019 World Tour, for all three legs, John placed the Strymon Flint before all of the delays. 
again, because he's mainly using the trem side. Now that's not to say that John doesn't use the reverb side of the Strymon Flint. He has actually used it during that tour, but he just made do with it being placed where it was when he wanted a little bit of extra reverb. Now what's interesting with the Strymon Flint is that as we're moving on into 2021, with Saw Brock coming out and Last Train Home, we've seen the Flint get moved. Now, John has actually used the Strymon Flint during the Grammy performance and during Jimmy Kimmel's Last Train Home performance. And in both cases, the Strymon Flint was actually last in the chain. Now, we don't know for certain because we don't have any footage of him stepping on it, but I do believe that he's using possibly that reverb side of it just to give a little bit more of a lush reverb that he can't get from the amps. And so therefore, he's actually placing it last in the chain after all the delays. My advice if you're using the Strymon Flint, if you need its reverb side and you're going to be using that a lot, especially if your amp doesn't have any reverb, place it near the end of the chain after all the delays. But if you're just predominantly wanting to have it for gravity and just to use the trim side, you don't really care about the reverb, then place it before your delay section. Okay, now the fifth and final pedal we're talking about isn't necessarily just a pedal, but it's more of an effect. We're going to be talking about where chorus is placed in the chain. Now I'm sure as some of you know, John did use the Full Tone TREC Chorus Rack Unit during the search for everything world tour in 2017, but we're predominantly going to be talking about from 2019 the tour and onwards as this is when we really saw John use the chorus as an effect a lot more and experiment with using it on songs that he never used it on before and of course Last Strain Home, the new era chorus is a huge part of John's sound. Now in order to really understand where John places chorus and what he thinks when he's placing a chorus effect pedal for modulation, I'm gonna break this down starting off with the first leg of the 2019 World Tour. Now for the first leg of the 2019 World Tour, there were actually two chorus pedals on John's pedal board. He had a Boss CE2 as well as a new neighbor Inspire. Now the Boss CE2 sat in a Keeley Looper with a Blackstone MOSFET overdrive pedal. John simply turned on the Keeley Looper and both the Blackstone MOSFET overdrive and the CE2 were activated at the same time. He didn't have to tap dance and he got a really nice luscious chorus sound when he wanted. Now this chorus overdrive loop sat before the delay section. The second chorus pedal that John had was placed last in the chain, the New Neighbor Inspire. And the New Neighbor Inspire was actually used for more of a rotary sound, kind of like what Joe Bonamassa does with the chorus pedal to kind of emulate rotary. It's not the same thing, but it does kind of its own Leslie flavor of effect. Moving on during the second and third leg of the 2019 World Tour, the chorus drive loop was eliminated and John just stuck with using chorus for the actual chorus effect, not for a fake rotary sound, and he kept that last in the chain after all of the delays. So up until this point, it's pretty safe to say that of course, for the most part, John liked to have it sit after all the delay sections. Now when we move on to the Grammy performance in 2021, John kept the Boss CE2 after the Providence Corona delay, but as I mentioned, the Strymon Flint got moved up. So he keeps reverbs when he needs them, very last, but other than that, the chorus sits still after all of the delays. Now where things get really interesting is the Last Train Home performance on Jimmy Kimmel Live. John had the Boss CE2 placed in between the Aquapus MK3 and the Providence Chrono Delay. So the slapback delay from the Aquapus was actually getting modulated by the CE2, but the longer delays from the Providence Chrono weren't, because he had it in between. At this point, it's hard to say if this is where Chorus is going to sit for all future performances and the upcoming tour that's eventually going to happen. John's probably just experimenting with what he wants. Now, my recommendation for you guys at home, I'd suggest to keeping the CE2 after your slapback delay, but experiment placing it before and after your longer delays. See what you like. John's using them both, and there's no real right or wrong answer. And until we actually see more performances and the eventual tour and how he uses Chorus, we can't know for certain where he's going to place it in the chain going forward from here on out. He's probably going to honestly experiment with placing it before and after and whatever he feels like at this, that certain point in time is probably what he is going to do. So there you guys have it. That was part two on the crash course for John Mayer's signal chain, how to understand it. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please hit that bell notification button and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. A big thank you as well. I hit 2,000 subscribers a few days ago and that is an incredible, an incredible accomplishment. Thank you guys all so much for the support. It means a lot to me and I hope that my videos are helping you guys and you're all really enjoying them. Until the next one, take care. We'll see you next time.